Heidi Ho, all you guitar nerds out there. And for a service and repair, we have this beautiful Epiphone Devon EA35T in pristine conditions. The owner's complaint a strange buzz when certain notes fade out, especially when played loud. Uh, this issue appears sometimes because of loose contacts like bad solder joints, loose wires or bad tube sockets, but most of the time it's a blown speaker, a rubbing voice coil. But before uh, we uh, dig deeper into that problem and start troubleshooting, let's examine this beauty. Here is the speaker code. This Jensen was made in the 44th week in 1961. 1961, that was the year J.F. Kennedy became President of the United States. Well, probably he never said that, but who knows? Maybe he did, and if so, he was right. Okay, enough of talking nonsense. Let's take a closer look at our patient. And here is the control panel. Two inputs, volume and tone control, depth and frequency for the tremolo and finally the power switch, the control lamp and the fuse holder. Overall a good condition, not too much corrosion. Did I mention that before? I love these plexiglass handles, beautiful. You can take a closer look at the Jensen speaker. Here, speaker code again. Let's hope for the best that this piece is not blown. The hardwired foot switch, perfect to utilize as a door stopper, is still sitting in its bracket. Nice. The volume pot is very noisy. Um, let's check the tube sockets for crackling noise. Well, no, no crackling at all. So the tube sockets seem to be fine. The filter can capacitor is um, new, so somebody definitely was in here before. And here you can see that the wires of the speaker are very loose. Only a few strands are barely hanging in there, so I have to take care of that later on. This dropping resistor looks suspicious. It has a burn mark on top and the solder joint seems to be cracked. Um, this free air construction of a cathode resistor and the bypass capacitor is not very elegant. And again, the solder joint looks suspicious. The bypass caps on the board are still original, uh, too old to be really reliable. I have to check this uh, sprag for leakage and here's another bypass capacitor that is too old to stay in here. The can capacitor is already new, as I mentioned before, and here we have uh, a wire that is much too long, um, so it can be a source of noise. And look at this. Also we have a 3 prong cord, they left uh, the desk capacitor in place, so this cap has to go as well. Yeah, but overall this amp is in very good conditions, cosmetically and technically. One thing I highly recommend is uh, to check the fuse, always. And here's an example why this is so important. Look at this. 
I don't know if you can read the letters on this fuse, but it shows 15 amps rather than the required one amp. Ooh, before this thing blows, <laughs> this amp will catch on fire. And somebody sprayed the whole chassis with some kind of grease. A good idea to stop corrosion, but not in an amp because grease can become conductive and not good in a high voltage device. And again, ear sticks are an Amtex best friend. Let's get out all the goop. Let's pay attention to the tube lineup because we have a very weird set of power tubes, 6BM8 tubes. This tube combines a triode and a pentode, so one tube for all purposes. The schematic shows us how this 6BM8 tube works. V2 works as a phase inverter and a power tube. V3 covers the tremolo and the second power tube. A very smart solution, I think. And if you own one of these amps, you will find out that these tubes are dirt cheap. And here they are, the original Gibson labeled tubes. And let's find out how they're doing after 60 years. Okay, the tube checker is set up. And boom, look at this, they are testing absolutely fine after 60 years. Very nice, huh? Okay, let's take a look at the second power tube. Yeah, it's hot. So we pop in the other Gibson label too. Power it on and let the tube warm up for a second. Yeah, and again we see the tube is in perfect shape. Nothing to complain. Uh, here is the preamp tube, uh, Gibson labeled 12AX7, made by Raytheon. Looks good, but as you can see here, this joker is microphonic and it's so bad microphonic that it even affects the power tubes. Hope you can hear that. I swept in uh, this um, Russian made mullard and it's much better, but still not perfect. So let's try another one. Um, this is a tube amp doctor 12A7 and the noise is completely gone. Perfect. No microphonics at all. Well here is the dropping resistor that I mentioned before. Also it's testing good. You can see that it shows discoloration and has some cracks in the shell. So, yeah, we're gonna change that to make sure that this resistor works fine. Uh, now we're gonna check the sprag capacitor for leakage. See, we have on one side 170 volts and on the other side 
Yeah, millivolts. That's nothing. So this capacitor is absolutely fine. Again, 117 volts on this side. And on the other side, nothing, so no leakage at all. So what the purpose of this capacitor? Let's take a look at the schematic. Here it is. And the purpose of this capacitor is to block this 117 volts of DC so we don't have no voltage on the depth potentiometer in the tremolo circuit. I had to remove the power switch to get access to the desk capacitor, but here it is. We don't need that thing anymore. Well, a good time now to review the work that's been done. The grid wire is shortened and placed behind the board. Here's the new bypass cap. The can capacitor was already changed in the past and we checked the Sprague coupling cap for leakage and it's okay. Here's the other bypass cap and you know I cleaned up the mess a little bit and we have a new dropping resistor and the cathode resistor with its capacitor is tied to the tube socket neatly. So far so good but bad news the speaker has the problem that I presumed before the voice coil is rubbing and you can see a large crack in the cone on the left side. So I called the owner and asked him what to do. Uh, luckily he had uh, a vintage speaker sleeping in his closet. Uh, you can see here the uh, speaker code. It's a roller and it's made in 1958. So very close. Call that period correct. Okay, now it's time to listen to the Epiphone. Good as Gibson Devon EA 35T. Have fun. <laughs> Thank you. 